Hey, welcome back. This is part four of the hybrid mixing series. I'm Mari from LB Music. And today I want to talk about a really important thing when you mix uh, with a console and output equipment. Um, it's recalling. So, for example, when you have a project and you or the client wants to make some changes, but you already moved on to another mixing project, um, you have to recall the whole session. And to do that, it's basically very simple. You just have to move the faders of the console, all the knobs to the position where you left them um, in the prior uh, mixing project that you want to recall. It's not quite as simple as like um, opening a project just in the box. So a console, an analog console doesn't really save anything. And there are certain consoles out there nowadays that are digital controlled and also have an analog circuit, so they have motorized faders and so forth. Um, but on a typical um, analog console, there is nothing like that. Um, you have to really move every fader um, by hand and turn every knob again. And a great help to do all this stuff is you can take photos. Um, there is a software um, which is called T-Boy um, where you can store all your information of the mixing session, for example. Um, there are also free PDFs of um, output equipment and consoles um, where you kind of can draw in um, everything with a pencil. So all the fader moves and all the um, knob positions. And lastly, um, you can also make your own templates. Um, like, for example, I did with my console, um, made just a, a recall sheet, um, a very simple one with all the knobs that are basically in the same position as on the console, and there I can just write in the uh, numbers or the position of the fader. And now let me show you how this whole recall um, process is done. So, first of all, I have here a folder with recalls. These are all the mi mixing projects that I have done so far um, with the console. So this is my studio track sheet um, where I have the different um, instruments here that are recorded. For example, if you the title of the song, I have the producer, um, when it was recorded and mixed, and the studio, the artist, sample rate, you can make here um, notes, for example, on this particular song. I made a kind of manually move of the solo section of a guitar after the chorus um, which is manually panned and I wrote it down here because every time you want to do the mix um, again you basically have to do it again manually and here are everything that is recorded like drums, shaker, the bass, the acoustic guitars left and right, um, electrics, another electric guitar and um, the solo lead vocal and so forth. Right and what is also kind of important for me is um, when I want to go back to a certain sound, so I listen to a song and for example I really um, kind of liked um, the tone of it, um, I have here a recording input list um, with the song title, artist and so forth and here I can um, write in the instrument, um, what microphone was used, preamp and also output equipment. Like here on the electrics, I used, for example, the Orange Crush amp and the uh, Marshall MG100 um, with a JTS, a dynamic microphone, and a preamp, um, the 2200. And, for example, an acoustic guitar, AKG C1000S. And that's really nice to have. Afterwards, you are done with the whole um, mixing and recording process. And you can always go back and see, oh, I recorded that with that microphone and or with that um, preamp. And here is now the actual recall sheet of my console. Um, I made it myself. As you can see, it's very basic. You have here the um, different channels. Um, here is the EQ section with the input knob and the low cut. I have here just um, two auxiliary pots. Um, because I usually don't use more than two um, outboard effects. Um, I have here the pan knob, solo mute button, and here is the actual fader. And what you basically do now is, um, same as on the console itself, I write down the instruments like drums, shake, bass, and so forth. 
um, you can draw in here now the um, fader. So when you are finished with mixing, um, you draw in all the fader moves and where they are um, at the moment. Then you can draw in the position of the band knobs, like left and right, or half left and so forth, or in the middle. Um, here I actually just write in a number um, of the auxiliary sand, like zero or minus one, or if the party is in the um, plus side. And here I can draw in all the EQ moves, if I have a low cut and so forth. But on this particular track I didn't use the, um, the console EQ. Everything was done in the box EQ wise, just with some low cuts. And the second page here, for example, is again here the other tracks to 24. Um, can write down notes if there is anything special. Um, here I have the, um, the main mix out, so where I have the fader there. Um, here are the subgroups. Like for example, a drum bus, a guitar bus, and the parallel vocal. Um, all the positions of the faders again, drawn in. And um, can make your notes of the outboard equipment. And here is now a very, very important recall sheet, which is from my outboard equipment. And I also made this myself. And what I did here is I just um, screenshotted and copied um, from the manuals um, the different front panels and with that it's very easy as you can see um, to draw in the, the position of the um, knobs and there are also the buttons that you can um, kind of highlight if they are pressed or not pressed and so that's really really very easy um, to recall later on um, basically what you also can do is just make photos um, of your output equipment and store it in the folder of your um, DAW session. Also what some people do, and but I kind of like the, the good old school way to make um, recall sheets. Alright, so um, let me show you now quickly on the drums and on the percussion track how that process goes. Um, it's basically very simple. Um, here is the sheet, we have here the fader the drums, um, here is the pan and the auxiliaries and so forth and let me now solo the drums and we have to get that to negative 5 for example hard left and right pan the auxiliary is to negative 1 and no EQ moves and then the shaker is to negative 10 in right in the middle oh sorry no half left and here to negative 2 which is about there and it goes on for the whole mixing task as you can see I already um, set all the faders here also the subgroups and um, the pan knobs and now let me show you quickly um, my output equipment like, for example, here we have the um, warm room setting on the MIDI verb. So let's dial that quickly in there. Should be 15. Um, same goes exactly for the um, lexicon. But let's switch to a compressor, for example. So here is the DBX, which is on the drum bus. I have here my trusty recall sheet uh, with the knob settings. So, let me solo the drums for a moment. And let's dial them in. So here we have on the gate nothing. It's turned off. That is negative eight here. That is two to one. Um, over easy is engaged. Also as auto, so that two knobs are controlled automatically. Um, it's set to zero and Stereo couple is on. So here is the Elysis 3630, for example, um, which is on the guitar bus. Let me solo that for you. And um, again, here with the recall sheet, here is the Elysis, and let's dive in those knobs. Um, threshold is already set, and then we got a ratio of 2 to 1. 
we got uh, attack of 150, very fast release, that's zero, peak is already selected and input monitoring from there. So this is the whole um, mixing setup, this is the console and everything is now set in also with all the uh, rack equipment and basically I can now start and do some changes um, if I or a client wants to and you're good to go. Alright, so this is how you basically recall a um, hyper mixing setup and it's definitely not that um, fast and easy like you do just with in the box mixing um, where you just open the session and you're ready to go. However, if you like the workflow of mixing with an analog console and outboard equipment, um, you get the hang of it pretty quickly and um, you get faster every time you do it. For example, when I have 24 channels to recall and a little bit of outboard equipment, it takes me approximately 8 to maximum 10 minutes and I'm good to go and start the session again. And um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, I have the links of um, two websites where you can actually um, download PDFs of front panels of um, outboard equipment free. Um, there is also a software which is called D-Boy, um, which has a subscription model, I think, um, where you can actually save all the settings of your outboard equipment in a software um, on the computer. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, please don't forget to subscribe if you like the hybrid mixing series. And have a good day and see you next time.